Hi, I'm Laurie Thomas with the University of Kentucky Department of Forestry and Natural Resources, and I'm here with the tree of the week, the sassafras. The sassafras is a widely distributed species known for its aromatic nature and variably shaped leaves. It's native to the eastern United States, and it's common here in Kentucky, and it's one of the first trees to grow in abandoned fields. It's what we call a pioneer species, and it's there with the help of visiting birds that love to eat the tree's fruit. It's a small to medium sized tree that grows up to 60 feet tall. It commonly root suckers and forms thickets or groups of trees like you can see here. Sassafras is an early bloomer and it's flowering right now. And it flowers before the leaves come out much like the red bud. This species has yellow male and female flowers on separate trees. It's dioecious, meaning two houses like the Kentucky coffee tree. The leaves, which are just starting to emerge, are deciduous and alternately arranged on the twig, as you can see in the yellow circle. They are variably shaped. They can be entire with no lobing. They can have two lobes like a mitten, or they can even have three. They are very aromatic when crushed, much like the twigs when you scratch them. In the fall, the leaves turn a brilliant red and look beautiful in the landscape. It's a great addition to any landscape. The fruit is a bluish droop that ripens in late summer. Now some parts of this tree are edible for humans, but the fruit is not. However, the fruit is eaten by a variety of wildlife. Lots of different birds like the gray catbird you can see in the photo here, um, wild turkey, bobwhite, as well as black bear. The leaves and twigs are eaten by white-tailed deer and the bark is eaten by rabbits. Overall, a pretty tasty tree. Sassafras is also an important tree for our butterflies. It is a host plant for both the spicebush swallowtail and the eastern tiger swallowtail butterflies. So if you want to attract butterflies to your landscape, think about adding the sassafras. The wood is lightweight and easily worked, and it's really durable. It's often used for small woodworking projects like this bowl you see here, which is quite attractive. Um, it's also used in the millwork industry and for paneling, as well as things like posts and rails and even cabinetry. Sassafras root was one of the earliest New World exports. It was used to perfume soaps and make tea. However, today, large doses of sassafras extract are not recommended since it contains a chemical called saffron, which may cause liver damage. Sassafras extracts, which do not contain saffron, are still used in commercial teas and root beer. That Creole spice fillet includes dried sassafras leaves that are ground into a very fine powder. It's what gives gumbo its unique consistency and very tasty flavor. The name sassafras was derived from the Spanish word salsafras, which refers to the tree's alleged medicinal value. The species name, albitum, refers to the light or whitish color of the undersides of the leaves. The national champion sassafras is here in Owensboro, Kentucky. It is 61 feet tall with a 50 foot one foot crown spread and a 283 inches in circumference, a pretty big tree to have in your front yard. If you wanna learn more about national champion trees, check out AmericanForest.org forward slash big trees and if you want to learn about our state champion trees check out the Kentucky Division of Forestry state champion tree list. Sassafras grows best in full sun or light shade in slightly acidic well-drained soils. It's an overall beautiful tree for all seasons spring, summer, fall so hopefully you can get out in your neighborhood or park or your woodland and enjoy seeing sassafras this spring and summer and fall.